Okay, another bang good, bang good, bang good clock. Um, this one has got an actually decent speaker on it, uh, so it's going to make nicer, nicer sounds. And I'm, I'm not sure what that board is doing, but that is accepting a mini USB. So whether that's the power management or whether that also drives audio. I have no idea, but we'll find out. So that's that bag of tricks. We have some very large LEDs, so I'm looking forward to that. I like the large LED displays. Look at those upside down, I think I might though, I don't know. We have a whole bunch of um, components on the back. So we have um, a battery holder in there, I think it is. Uh, we have got a surface mount chip. So that means everything's going to go horribly round, uh, wrong. Uh, a 16 volt um, electrolytic capacitor, the inevitable IAP chip, uh, a thermistor, photoelectric cell, and uh, ooh, a micro USB jack again. Not sure what's going on there. Anyway, uh, and we have the power cord, again, micro USB. Some force uh, 20 uh, 20 k uh, resistors and some 470 ohm resistors as well. And this is the board. Um, let's see if I got that upside down. No, um, so nicely printed, all very straightforward. Hopefully, you can see the large round circle there. That's obviously where the um, uh, speaker is going to sit, which I suspect is held in place by that sticky pad uh, no case with this one unfortunately there's the battery CR2032 all fairly straightforward stuff so um, we also have some destructions um, in both Chinese and English uh, which is all about the settings and da -de -da, -de da and more importantly as far as the build is concerned we have uh, the uh, circuit diagram, or at least where all the components go. So uh, it looks all fairly straightforward. <coughs> so what I'm going to do first of all is install all the resistors. So you can see where the uh, 470 ohm ones go a bar. 20Ks there, all fairly straightforward. That's the bit I'm not looking forward to, the surface mount. I'm just no good at surface mount. Um, so what I'm going to do with the surface mount is uh, I shall pre-tin all of these uh, pads uh, and then just apply some heat to them and hopefully the pins will stick uh, in places where they're supposed to stick. Actually, I'm, I'm inclined actually to install that first because those um, 20k resistors are right by it. And uh, it's going to be fiddly enough, fiddly enough to uh, install that surface mount um, as it is without um, having to fight around the resistors that I've already installed. So I think I might pop those in first, or pop the uh, chip in first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin these uh, pads and then apply heat to them. Hopefully that will... Uh, mean that the chip sticks down. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. Let's see how it goes. Right, so that's the uh, surface mount chip installed. Basically what I did is I did put some, um, I did tin the pads first, then offered up the chip to the pads. That wasn't a great idea, so I just carefully um, individually soldered them. It's not come out too bad, can't see any bridging. I have looked at under using a magnifying glass and it looks okay. Um, so that's that's that. So the next thing to do is to install, let's do the 20Ks first. So all of these four are 20K resistors and helpfully they have marked, as you can see on the tape, that they are 20K. So I need four of they. So let's uh, bend these legs and then just pop one in and I just splay the legs out like that to hold them in while I solder. So 
Uh, that's the first one. Uh, let's suspend the other ones. Probably shouldn't do it like this. I know that there are special tools that you can get that bend the legs of components, but um, I'll leave those sort of things to the professionals. And I am far from being a professional. My understanding of electronics is um, ultra basic at, uh, at the least. I mean, I certainly couldn't explain what's going on on this board. Uh, not, not with any deep conviction, that's for sure. Um, so, uh, no, very much a hobbyist kit maker. But I do like soldering and I do like electronic gadgets and I like things that go flash and are shiny and I like my gadgets and my geeky life of gadgets which I thoroughly enjoy when I can afford to but the great thing about these kits is that affordability in general is not a great issue because I mean this kit was probably I don't know five pounds something like that um, and it gives you and it gives you an evening's entertainment, which is not bad for five pounds these days. As long as you're not doing it every night, then it's affordable. Um, and uh, I certainly enjoy making these kits and then wiring them all up and making them run at the same time. Um, I don't know. It's just um, something I enjoy doing. And if you enjoy it, then why not? So uh, I've just soldered one leg of those chips i'm just going to then melt them down so i uh, know that they're nice and flush against the pcb i think they are any rate so i'm not going to get too precious about it so that's those four and let's do the other side and then we'll do the other resistors after this um this uh, soldering iron that I'm using is probably too hot. It's not one of those soldering irons that you can adjust the heat. It's, um, what is it? It's an Antex CS, uh, and it's 18 watts. And I probably had this soldering iron for 20 years, probably. And I think they still make that model, or certainly one very, very similar to it. And it's a fantastic soldering iron because it, you know, it's had quite a bit of use over the years, and it's still going strong. Admittedly, I have changed the tips, replaced the tips, but that's fair enough, I think. Um, and you've got different tips for um, different applications: thin ones, thick ones, um, and so on. So yeah, it's been a good, a good iron. Right. Okay. Let's do the other resistors. Uh, we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, all bar one. So let's do these eight resistors as well. Probably not too exciting watching me solder resistors to a board. So I'll just do these and I'll get back to you. Okay, so that's all the resistors soldered in. Um, they're dancing about a bit there, aren't they? Didn't really make a very neat job of that, never mind. Uh, okay, so what's next? We have got an electric cap. We've got a couple of uh, push-to-make switches. And clicky types. Um, and we have got some other caps. These are marked 104. Um, so let's do those. And one of them, I've got the board upside down, no wonder I can't read the circuit diagram. Right, C2 is one of them. Let me pop that in there. And C3, which is there. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, what I want to do, what I normally do is I just 
solder one leg initially. I don't know why, the solder just doesn't want to melt tonight for some reason. And one leg there. You can't see, can you? That better. And uh, whilst putting the finger on the capacitor, just melt it, straighten it, flatten it to the uh, surface of the PCB. Actually, that one's fine as it is. So uh, what I need to do now is uh, solder the other two. I don't think the lighting is very good here, so I think what I'm going to do is change the bulb in a minute. Bizarre as it may sound. Okay, so what else have we got? We got a uh, sixteen. What is the value of this? Hundred microfarad at sixteen volts, and that goes. Oh wait a minute! Let's um, let's crop these pins. And the two caps I just put in, and here. Right, yeah, so electrolytic capacitor, that goes up there, at C1. And the uh, positive side, which is the longer of the two pins, and the negative is also marked on the case, as you can see there. The positive goes at the bottom, and you'll see there's a little plus symbol on the board. goes in there rubber we'll solder on that one and that looks nicely flat against the board anyway right. that's fine and solder up the other one okay Legs dutifully cropped. Okay, so that's that. Slowly getting there now. So that's the battery holder. Put that on later. And we've got our photoelectric cell, which what will happen is that when you switch the lights out, this will dim the display, which is a nice idea. That's the micro uh, mini USB jack and a thermistor which will hopefully tell the temperature, although they're not accurate, not by long chalk. And then we have the main chip, which goes into the board neatly there. Well, neatly-ish. You might have to bend the pins to get them to comply. Yeah, I'm going to have to bend one side at least. So Hash of that, aren't I? <laughs> Let's see if that goes in. Oh. Well, of course, the important thing is um, you see that there's a, a notch on the chip, and you have to match that up with the notch on the circuit board. And similarly, by the way, with the uh, the chip, you see that there's a little dot. And you can't see it now, unfortunately, but you might just be able to see it underneath there. But there's a white dot on the uh, silk screening, which indicates that's the orientation of that chip. So you have to uh, watch out for these things when you're putting these kits, to, kits together. So you can get this in. Can't see what I'm doing. I'm not making a very good job of this at all.
and making a distinct clock up of the whole thing. Getting there though. There we go, that's the chip. Plug it in to the board and we just need to solder it on the other side. Let's just make sure that all the pins are poking through, which they are. Okay. Right, so with the magic of solder and heat, we'll uh, get this uh, welded, as the Chinese would say, to the board. Tiny amounts of solder, don't need much. Ideally not put the heat against the chip for that long if you can avoid it. Whether they're that sensitive to it or not, I don't know, but I try not to take that risk with any component, frankly. Uh, although I did muck about with the surface mount one quite a bit before I got it right, so that did get a bit toasty, it had to, oh, I have to admit. And down to tiny little bit of solder here. Eh? I might just get a new bit. Right, that's that side. Time for a new bit of solder. Solder I use is quite thin, um, which I find is uh, much more manageable than the thicker stuff that you can get. Because you can always put more on and just gradually build it up depending on what component you're installing like the battery holder for example will take quite a bit of solder <clears throat> on each of its contacts um, but that's okay with the small stuff you just add more uh, there we go. one by one and we get in there I didn't count how many pins there were on this chip, but there's quite a few. One there, one there. And one there. So that's the chip installed. I'll just have a good close look at the soldering, make sure I haven't missed any. Make sure there aren't any bridges. That's looking good. Okay, right, now what shall we do? We have got Uh, I got the thermistor, the, there's the, uh, that's where the battery goes, actually this isn't going to take an awful lot of solder, some of them have got fairly large metal pads on them, but this one hasn't, um, and this will go that way around like that, but before I do that I think we'll install the switches probably, and then we are going to be on to The LEDs, but before we do that, let's have a look inside this other bag, which is where the speaker is. And we've got some wires here. Oh, so those wires, which would normally be pre-attached, I think, to the speaker, aren't. So that's fair enough. I'm not sure where they go. But we will work it out, I'm sure. Um, and there's the other small board. I, I really don't know what that's doing. Because it's got a mini USB connector on it already. And we have in another mini USB here. So I'm not sure what's going on, so I'm just going to stop a minute and double check what I need to do. Okay, so this board basically bridges across the chip like, oops, wrong way around. Keep on going out, so get going out a shot, apologies for that. There you go, it goes down there like that. And obviously solder there and all these other holes here are going to be where the uh, LEDs are mounted. And you can see the LEDs have got a little dot against each of them. So you can see 
what the orientation will be. So that one will go like that, like that, and then this one will go like that, and then the last one will go like that. So, okay, so that's that board there that's been plugged in. I'm just making sure that there aren't any other components that need to go underneath that because that will be a right royal pain in the bum if I soldered that down and had to take it off again to put another component in. Which, to be honest, wouldn't be the first time I've done it. Right, okay, I don't think so is the answer. So that is fitting in there quite snugly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack that down. This side as well. Just starts the other end. So a quick eyeball of the uh, soldering there, make sure it's all in. Well, I didn't make a very good job with the first two actually. So let's um, give them a bit more solder. Uh, using too little there. Okay, that looks good. Ah. Okay. Well, you can see I've cocked up there a bit because that board is now at an angle. I think the technical expression now is bugger. But do you know what? It's soldered in. And it's going to have to stay that way. What an idiot. There you go. Don't make these kits late at night. That's the lesson today, children. Okay, so those pins are actually sticking out a bit now, aren't they? So I'm just double check that the LED will fit. Um, which way will go that way? Oh my word, these LED pins are all over the place. Unfortunately, during transit, that's what happens. The packages are not boxed, they're only in plastic bags, and therefore they get they get bent very easily. But there you go, you can see how that goes in, so that, that fits okay. Um, what I'm not sure about is where the wiring for the speaker goes. That I am distinctly unclear about. So I've got the speaker there. Obviously, I've got to put these two wires on it. Well, I don't think it matters which one goes where. Um, but I'm not sure where they go on the board. I really don't know. I'll tell you what we will do. We can install the switches next. These things are always so bloody fiddly to get in. At least I find that they are. But once they're plugged in, they tend to be quite firm. Ah, that leg's bent, that's why. I expect I probably just bent it. Let's straighten that out. And try it again. can't see anything at the moment, can you? All right, there we go. So just slot that one in there. And do likewise with this one. There we 
go like that. I've got some fairly long stalks there. Okay, and the next thing is a dob of solder to hold all those in. Yeah, it won't win any prizes, but hey, there we go. Um, I dare say we could pop the battery holder in next. I don't see why not. That's going to fall out the other side. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a bit of solder on the end of my iron. Just get it just to just about hold one side in of the battery holder that is and then properly solder both sides and that's that what else have we got still don't know what that's going to be for I'm missing something somewhere, I'm sure. Let's put in the photoelectric cell, which is marked as RL1. Are they photoelectric? They're resistors, actually, I think, in, in technically. And you usually put these away from the board so it's up there looking for the light or not and on that on that that's the photoelectric cell and the next thing would be the thermistor and neither the thermistor nor the photoelectric cell have a polarity so doesn't matter which way you pop them in. That goes into RT1. Again, I'll bend it up on the way from the board. So it's out in the air, trying to work out what the temperature is. Get a little bit longer piece of solder. I'm going to need a fair bit of solder yet because we've got all the LEDs to be installed. So let's pop that one in. And that one. So that's the thermistor. You see, it doesn't really take long to, to put these kits together. So that's how she's looking now. With a wonky board. What a pelic I am. Never mind, never mind. I'm sure it will all work. But at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Right, what's next? Um, well, you know, looking at the board... I don't know where, as I said before, the wires for the speakers go. And it's probably staring me in the face, but I can't see it. Ah, here we go. That's where they go. So that must be, oh, I was right earlier on, so that must be some sort of audio driver. So, um... There's a couple of pads here, 
them here. And one is marked plus and one is marked minus. And that is going to be for the speakers or speaker. So a speaker will go on like that, stick on with that sticky pad there and something like that. And then the wires all come from the speaker to these two pads here. So I think the first thing I need to do is solder the two wires onto the speaker. There's actually a fair bit of solder on them already, but I am going to put some more on, rightly or wrongly. Probably didn't need to, but there we go. Now, what's the best way of doing this? Uh, yeah. Actually, I should have tinned those wires first. Never mind, that one's most definitely in. And we shall do the same for this guy. And that's in. Next, we'll peel off the sticky backing and locate the speaker onto the board right there. Give it a bit of pressure to stick, probably fall off. Okay, and then Likewise, I'm going to just put a bit of extra solder onto these two tabs. So that one's the minus, that one is the plus. So the plus will go there. And minus, actually, I think what I might do is try and get the routing of these a little better. And then the same way, I can tidy them up later, I guess. And uh, just give that a bit of a kink at the end. the speaker pretty much in and I can just bend the wires down like that to keep them out of the way make it look a bit neater I can always put a bit of hot glue on there or something later on and just hold those wires in place but that'll do for now uh, might as well install the battery next Is that for? I wonder if they supplied it forgetting that there was one already installed on the audio board or whatever that's going to be. But I can't see anywhere else that would accept another LED jack. Actually, I will forget the battery for the moment. So the next thing to do is to install all of the LEDs. Uh, and that's going to take some fiddling about, and I just suddenly realised I probably would have been better off putting the LEDs in first, because I've now got the speaker in the way. So when I try soldering them up there, it's going to be a bit fiddly. All right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, as you can see, LEDs will go on like that, like that, like that, and like that. Um, they've got some protective film on them at the moment, I'll take that off later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and install all these LEDs and I will come back to you. Well, it's been a, a good few days since um, I last started doing this video. And uh, I've finished it off, as you can see. 
got the uh, the LEDs are installed. I really like these LEDs as well. They're very nice, large, and very bright. Uh, everything's installed. Speaker, uh, audio board, everything. However, there is a problem. And I'll show you what that problem is. So let me um, power it up. There we go. And that's the problem. It flicks between lighting all the LEDs. Let's switch the light off so you can see it a bit clearer. Um, lights all the LEDs and comes up with the EOR2. And I don't know why. I don't think there's anything wrong with the construction. I've been through it quite a few times just to see if I've got something wrong and I can't see anything wrong with it. Actually, when you look at it, I think I might have a... I think I might have a pin there that I haven't soldered properly on one of the LEDs. Right, right there, look at that. I wonder if that'll focus. Let's see why I can increase the magnification. Ah. It actually looks like it's connected, to be honest. So, uh, but it, it doesn't look as if it's going to be the issue because all the LEDs are, are lit. Um, so I don't think that's the problem. But there it goes, EOR2. And that's all I can get out of it. Pressing the buttons doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's disappointing. Very disappointing. But I don't know what the problem is. I've been having a good fiddle about As I say, I've been checking all the components and the soldering and... Bleh. I can only think that the software and the chip is corrupted or not there even. I don't know. I don't know. But there you go. So if this worked, it would have been a cracking kit. Um, very nice kit. But it doesn't. So it isn't. What a shame. Never mind. On to the next one. Bye.